guys. It is the end of August, early September, and it's been a little while since I've shown you the garden. It is currently in transition between summer and fall blooms, and I'm gonna show you how this garden is transitioning, but still has lots of color, because I'm all about having an ever-blooming garden that has lots of color throughout the growing season, which for me here in New Jersey, I'm in zone 6A, uh, you know, everything breaks, breaks ground in early spring, and then, um, you know, we have a season that runs through fall. So for starters, we've, we're seeing lots of yellows and oranges in the garden, and that's with blooms and foliage. So when I planted this garden, I not only thought about the blooms, but I also considered what the foliage would look like as we move through the season. So let's talk about things that are blooming and what's changing. So right now my Black Eyed Susans are still blooming. I've got my Moonbeam Coreopsis over there. They're still blooming, amazingly enough. I'm kind of surprised they're still going, but here we are. Um, I have a couple of balloon flower blooms, blooms left, but they're all starting to go to seed. And uh, eventually I'll neaten up the garden and cut these back, but for now I leave them. I kind of like the texture that the seed pods add, so I just leave them. I uh, planted some some dahlias here along the front in the spring. I usually look for pink ones from the nursery because I kind of like that pinkish color, but this year they didn't have that. They had this uh, yellow, this, this beautiful color here, and I thought it was gonna look really good in fall, and I really think it's gonna be spectacular in the fall border. So I'm really looking forward to it. My tall flox, is almost done blooming. It's seen better days. It's starting to suffer from a powdery mildew, so I know there's not a lot of time left here on those. In the back there, I've got some queen lime orange zinnias. My sunflowers, they did really well, but we've had so many storms here that they didn't really stand up through the storms. And, uh, you know, a lot of them were falling over. That's my dog. <laughs> She's sniffing around over here while I'm videoing. Um, but, uh, you know, it still looks pretty. And I've got my, uh, that's an even, that's Evening Rose Summerific Hibiscus by Proven Winners. It's so beautiful, isn't it? I have a bunch of Echinacea tucked in here, but they're pretty much done blooming for the season. And someone asked me if there's a way to deadhead them. And you know what? I just let them finish doing their thing. Then I let the birds eat all the seed. And then I just kind of cut them down to neaten up the garden. It's just, that's how I do it. Uh, I know other gardeners might, you know, do things differently with them, but that's just how I like to keep this, this bed. And over here, I've got some cat mint that actually is starting to get a couple extra blooms. I did cut this back not too long ago and I'm starting to get a second set of blooms. I've got some more zinnias over there that I planted. I grew like nine different varieties of zinnias and because I had no room left in the backyard, I wound up just throwing them in anywhere. And here's, here's a good patch. In the back there, I've got some arborvitaes and uh, some globe thistle that has finished blooming. In the front part of the garden here, butterfly weed is done and it's already gone to seed. This is beautiful aster. It's a gorgeous, like bluish purple. Can't wait for that one to bloom. I've got some more dahlias and sedum autumn joy. You guys know how much I love sedum autumn joy. I'm gonna tag a video that you can check out where you can learn all about it, but really my favorite, probably my favorite perennial because it just does so much in the garden. And then here we've got some more zinnias. Again, I just tucked a lot of these in. <laughs> That's some Solidago. It is not invasive. This variety is not invasive. It's pretty much just stayed in its place. Um, and uh, it looked really pretty. I guess it's kind of done uh, doing its thing, but looked pretty well bloomed. This is what's left of Serendipity Allium by Proven Winners. It was really pretty and the bees really loved it, but it's done now. 
and I just love those flower heads. I'm going to leave them until they're really like completely dry just because I love how they look. And then back there, I've got my knockout roses that are starting to bloom again, probably for like the fourth time this year. I'm often asked what I feed my roses. I feed all of my roses with a Spoma's Rose Tone. Uh, I, I've, I've gotten best blooms from using that fertilizer and I just follow the directions and feed my roses and they all do amazing. So I've also got some more zinnias here and as you can see, they're pretty much done. As we head into fall, these are just going to really finish up and I'm, I probably will, you know, get my last licks of cutting these blooms for arrangements and then that'll be it. And then just to give you a little close up of Sedum Autumn Joy, I love those flower heads. I mean, isn't that so pretty? It goes from that chartreuse to that pink and then it's just going to deepen as fall goes on. I had some bee balm here. It's really time to cut it back. It's starting to get a powdery mildew and it's done blooming. So uh, I've, I, like I said earlier, I do like to keep the seed heads up for a little while to feed the birds. And then eventually I will start cutting it back. In the back there is my hydrangea paniculata. Love, 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 love that tree. It's beautiful. I cut it back hard every, at the, at the beginning of early spring and then just kind of let it go. And that's the only thing that I do <laughs> with that. I don't, I don't, I don't fertilize it. I do amend my soil with compost and stuff, but I don't like fertilize or feed uh, my hydrangeas. And then moving along, this is a delphinium that is about to rebloom, which how cool is that? I was not expecting that, but it's, I'm getting another set of blooms. So I'm pretty happy about that. And like I said before, I've got some more uh, Coreopsis blooms. It's still going, although you can see that it's starting to, you know, fade and it's, it's, it's pretty done for the season. So once it's totally done, I'll cut it back to neaten up the garden. All the cosmos here are essentially done. We've had quite a few storms and it's just really given the garden a beating. <laughs> so the plants are starting to really flop over. We've, we've really had a lot of rain this year. Um, I've got some more zinnias over here. I've got, look, I actually kept the tag in for this one. This is a sedum and it is, if I put my glasses on, rock and grow back in black. And I love the color and texture on this. It's new in the garden. And so I'm pretty excited to see how it grows. And then this is a giant salmon zinnia. And then I've got, oh look, it's a pretty monarch butterfly hanging out over there on the Joe Pie. Over here, I've got my crane's bill. As you can see, it's really starting to change in color. So you know fall is on its way. In the back there is my oak leaf hydrangea. I'm a huge fan of oak leaf hydrangeas. You know, they not only bloom, but then that foliage really turn, it really adds some beautiful autumnal color to the border. So uh, if you have room for one, definitely add it because it's just gorgeous. And then I added a new hosta here too. Which one's this one? This one's called Shadowland Diamond Lake and it's going to be a little more bluish. Uh, it's really new. I just planted it. Please ignore the weeds. <laughs> I have to get out here and do some work, but it's been so hot haven't been able to really get out here. Uh, and then back there, I've got some ferns and um, a maple. I used to have a Japanese maple back here, but when we had Superstorm Sandy, when that hit, it really took out a lot of this garden. And that was just like, I guess a bird must have dropped seed or something because I don't have a maple here like that. And uh, I just kind of let it, let it grow and it's doing its thing. So in the back there, next to the oak leaf hydrangea, I've got a rhododendron. And uh, again, you can kind of see everything's starting to change for fall. These ferns are from my friend's garden. 
Uh, I believe they are ostrich ferns and they are beautiful. They have taken over this area. They've done exactly what I wanted them to do. I don't need to weed and that is good for me. Love it. In this container, I have some canna lilies, sweet potato vine. I'll get the variety for you guys and tag it on the, on the video. Some super bells that have seen better days, some gora that has seen better days, some euphorbia that has seen better days. So I'm gonna be cleaning out this container pretty soon, but I still love the color of the um, canna lilies and the, um, I don't know, it's still working for me on the front step. So I'm gonna kinda squeeze a little more time out with it, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close up so you can see what it looks like. It's gonna be interesting to watch this bed change over the next few weeks. Uh, it'll still have some blooms, but I'm gonna be adding some fall plantings in there to jazz things up as I cut some things back. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me in the garden today. I'm Stacy from Bricks and Blooms. Enjoy a beautiful day.